A reading from the first letter of St. John. I am writing to you, children, because your sins have been forgiven for his name's sake. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have conquered the evil one. I write to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God remains in you and you have conquered the evil one. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, sensual lust, enticement for the eyes, and a pretentious life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. Yet the world and its enticement are passing away. But whoever does the will of God remains forever. The word of the Lord. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. A holy day has dawned upon us. Come, you nations, and adore the Lord. Today a great light has come upon the earth. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. There was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, and having lived seven years with her husband after marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Israel. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of the Lord and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. The end of our first reading today says, whoever, whoever does the will of God remains forever. Whoever does the will of God remains forever. 
Uh, I want to actually recall something that Deacon Ed said yesterday in his homily and bring that back a little bit. He noted as Mary and Joseph are going to the temple, they're simply fulfilling the requirements of the law that God had outlined for them. They were simply being obedient to what God had commanded. They weren't doing anything special, anything out of the ordinary. There was no vision from an angel. This was simply doing what was, to some extent you could say even, they were obligated to do. When we understand that, though, in the best sense of the term of obligation, that that doesn't become something uh, obligatory as in heavy, but something that is our right obedience to the Lord. And this, uh, what they were fulfilling are the days of purification. When you go back into Leviticus, you get the requirements after a woman has a baby. So she has seven days that she remains uh, seven days of purification uh, after she's had the child, and then there's an additional 33 days uh, following that. So seven days for a son, an additional 33 days, totaling 40 days that she remains at home uh, preparing for her purification. So where she would then arrive in the temple, they would take an offering of a lamb, if they didn't have that, the turtle doves, which they take, and they present themselves, she presents herself in the temple for her purification. As well, there was a, uh, a bit of a liturgical rite of presenting the firstborn son. Uh, and we get that, that language about Jesus, that Mary had her firstborn son, not in the sense of trying to enumerate this as number one, two, three, four, five, but the profound reality and really a, a legal statement for those in Israel that the one who was the firstborn son had unique rights and privileges and that Jesus is a firstborn son. So this takes us back to the end of this first reading. Whoever does the will of God remains forever. And the Christian life is not complicated for me, for you, when we simply do the will of the Lord, do what God has asked us to do, we find great peace and blessing. And we see it all around us. We see when we say yes to the Lord and those around us say yes to the Lord, that it, that's a world we want to live in. That's a, a wonderful place. In fact, just the other day as we were sitting around for some of our Christmas time here, we were recounting uh, just some various encounters, and my dad was recounting a time where he had parked his car somewhere, and somebody just, you know, came in. He had a daily planner there, and they swiped the planner, hoping there was money in it, stole it, and thinking, doesn't everybody want to live in a world where people honor one another and treat one another the same? But the reality is we are under this taskmaster of sin, and that, that opening opening prayer, that opening collect, um, spoke about that, that taskmaster that we're under, that being under that yoke of sin, which, which drives us. So this season, this Christmas season, about the Lord coming into our world, is about inviting you and I to do what the will of God says. We should be encouraged by Mary and Joseph that amidst the dreams and visions, they're simply just doing what God outlined for them. And when we look at struggles in family, marriage with children, culture, politics, it's not much more complicated than what has God said to do, and let's do that. And real concretely, how we speak to one another, the topic of our conversation, how we treat one another, how we treat those that are total strangers to us, doing the will of God at every turn. It's not much more complicated than that. I take great peace, I find great peace in knowing that as Jesus entered into humanity, it says that he fulfilled all righteousness. He fulfilled all the law so that Jesus himself, God in the flesh, did all that God had outlined for them to do. And that invites us today to reflect on what is God calling us to do 
Where is it in our life that we are needing to respond more fully to the Lord, simply saying yes to do what he has called and asked us to do, therefore honoring God, and as the second greatest commandment says, honoring our neighbor as well. Amen? Amen.